Hi, welcome back to Willie Farms. I'm Donna Cavender and this is Jill, one of our cashiers. Hi, and Jill and I are gonna team up a little bit later in the show. We're gonna talk about freezing and canning both vegetables and fruits. And that's why we're right here in front of these wonderful fruits, these beautiful blackberries. And you've got some cherries now. What are we gonna do with the cherries? I think because they're so beautiful, we're going to can them. <laughs> okay, and so we're, we're gonna be talking about yes. canning and freezing today. Willie Farms, Route 13, Townsend, very easy to find us. We're just south of Odessa, just a little bit north of Smyrna. And our website, williefarmsde.com. And we'll talk about social media a little bit later. But right now, let's go and see one of your favorite segments, which was all about trail mixes. And here we are with Sarah Willie here at the sampling counter. And you were telling me that you make your own trail mix. I do. Um, I make trail mix. I sit it on the kitchen counter. And it's a, it's a way for me. I like to get nuts into my diet. Mm -hmm. And by having trail mix on the counter, I have nuts and it's on the ready, it can sit out available. on the counter for a week okay. or two, it, it doesn't right. go bad. And this way, when you make your own, you can put what you like in it. Right. Right, so we've got some of the things that you've got here. So it's a simple process, and, and Sarah hurt her hand Sorry. a little bit earlier today. <laughs> so I'm going to be her uh, sous chef, I guess. Right. Um, so we've got a lot of your favorites. So what do we have here? So we have Right, we have, I just pick out, I pick out a couple kinds of nuts, a couple kinds of dried fruit. Um, I think I have goji, some berries, goji berries and yeah. some uh, chocolate covered espresso beans. Okay. So we just pour in. So in we the pour in, do, do we pour all of that in? No, or I just pour some of it in. Just, just some of it, okay. There's no rules. Can we rules. do that? No rules? All right. No We've recipe, got, no rules. These are organic dried cranberries mm -hmm. that are sweetened, so we'll put some of those in there. And we've got our nuts, which are our uh, raw cashews. And again, we'll put some of that in there. Take yep. this over here. Almonds. Now, almonds, we all know that almonds are really, really good for us, have all those great um, right. I nutrients. Maybe half, half the bag in there. Half the, oh. I like the almonds. We like the almonds. Okay. All right. Banana chips, always good. Banana chips, if we get uh, your potassium mm -hmm. with the banana chips. So we put, do we want more than that? Oh, a few more. Shoo, four more. Okay. Gonna, there we go. We're going to try to fill it up. We're going to try and fill it up. All right. And okay. then what do we have here? This is the um, tart cherries. Oh. I like those. These are the unsweetened ones. Okay. Um, and we put about that much in? Yeah, a few more. Ah, she likes the tart cherries too. Okay, so we put that in there. And finally, we have the dark chocolate espresso beans. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh, the dark chocolate. Everybody and loves sometimes the dark I'll chocolate. Do, uh, sometimes I'll use our chocolate or our, our peanut butter pretzels. That's enough of those. Okay. Sometimes right. I use the yogurt covered raisins. And um, I've seen, uh, yeah, like you say, pretzels. And we have lots of different flavors of pretzels, mm -hmm. not just plain pretzels, but different flavors. Now, these are the organic goji berries. Mm -hmm. And they um, add a nice color. Yeah. So you sprinkle. Sprinkle some of them some in there. Some of them in there. Maybe that's enough. Sure. All more. right. And then we just mix it up. Just take your. You can shake it up, mix it up. I'm right handed. <laughs> <laughs> She's right handed. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the idea, and that's I, the idea. I, I put a little put a little handy dandy scooper in there. Okay. And I have an airtight lid. And it's an airtight lid, so it keeps it nice, and it looks Just pretty too. Looks, looks pretty. really nice sitting on the counter, and it's a make your own trail mix. Thank you, Sarah. You're welcome, Don. All right, now we're going to go talk to some of the Willie employees about some of the things that they do and buy here at Willie Farms to give them uh, energy and stay healthy. Hi, Molly. How you Hi. doing? Doing well? I'm doing well. Okay, great. And the reason why she does so well is that, Molly, I understand that you do smoothies. I do. I just started um, just a couple of weeks ago, but I wanted to get a little bit of the raw, the natural. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in heart healthy, a little bit of high cholesterol. Okay. And a lot of the ingredients in the smoothies are good for that. And blending everything up is a whole lot easier than eating a whole plate full of raw food. Right, and I see that you have some books here. You, you've I done do some research. I do have books, um, and I got all these here. I got this. This is what I started with, Green Smoothie Cleanse, um, and it's a little, it's a little hardcore, kind of. Okay, but, so it's um, good to do your research. It's good to do the research. I've gotten all kinds of interesting ideas out of here. Okay, so what do you do? I take, it's very simple, 
and I don't really use a recipe. I do frozen berries. We've got the triple berry mix that I get here, um, or you can do frozen blueberries. I just take frozen blueberries. I take tropical frozen mango. I do a frozen right now because it's winter. Right. And I throw it in. I use coconut water, which is just wonderful. It's got potassium. Very hard, popular. Right. It's, yeah. it's really good. Okay. I use this. I use um, the almond because I need extra calcium. I don't need the extra okay. cholesterol in dairy products. So okay. I throw that in. It gives a little flavor. Goji berries, wonderful, super nutrition. Okay. Um, and then this makes it more like a meal, the ground flaxseed, and this has flavors, right. the tropical. Always flaxseed, very flax good for seed, you. I throw that in. I used this morning um, Kaufman's apple cider. I threw that in. And then I take a nice big handful, and this is pre-washed. I take a nice big handful of baby spinach, and I throw it in. I just throw it in, and I blend it up. And you could actually use any kind of a green, you can use dark anything. green, right? Kale is really popular right now. I haven't gotten to kale. I, I haven't gotten there yet, but spinach is healthy as well. <laughs> okay. Um, and it's sort of casual, and it's kind of fun. Um, and I just throw it in and blend it up. And um, all right. You I ready think, to try? I think it's time to taste. <laughs> I think it's time. Okay. All right. It looks a little interesting, but it's well, basically the color is blueberry and it's the spinach. Right. Okay. So let's Oops. have a little bit. Let's have some. Let's get healthy today. All right. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Here we to go. To your health. Isn't that good? Oh, that's nice. It's that's good. nice. It's creamy. All right. I taste the tropical. That's you don't right. taste the spinach. It's, it's, it's really wonderful. <laughs> it's very good. So to a healthy Molly. Thank you. Well, now we know all about how to make your own trail mix, and it looked really good to me. We're here in front of the watermelons here, and stop by Willie Farms. We got great seedless watermelons, delicious during the summer. But let's move on to another one of our favorite segments, and that's all about gourmet cheeses. We have a wonderful selection of cheeses the hard cheeses, the soft cheeses. We also have a whole selection of organic cheeses that we get. There's string cheese, if you like string cheese, we've got that in the organic, and uh, all kinds of cheddar cheese, Parmesan cheese in the organic. We have the hard cheeses that are back here. You've heard of Reggiano, Parmigiano Reggiano, okay, that's one of the hard cooking cheeses. We've got some award-winning cheeses here at Willie Farms as well. We love the Bella Vitano. I think we've tasted it here before when you guys were here, but we wanted to remind people about these award-winning cheeses, especially this Merlot. Now this is a wheel. This is how we get it. And then Jan goes through the process that she needs to go through to slice it up and put it into these. This is a first place winner, um, award winner, but also the rest of the Bella Vitanos are award winners as well. Different the Asiago, you've heard of that before. There's the uh, Raspberry Bellavitano, uh, the Gold, the Extra Aged. Yeah, um, that, which I love, Extra oh, Aged. Really oh, good. yeah, yeah. And speaking of the Aged, we get this. This is a cheese that we get from Canada, and this is a cheddar, and it's been aged three years. Oh, so I, it's got a really good oh, bite oh, to I, it. Oh, that's right. I love that. You make my mouth water when you talk <laughs> about it here. So, yeah. But, okay. And, and regular, pat, you know, you got some different cheeses. What we are we have these. Now, these are special. These are grilling cheeses. These are grilling cheeses. This has a little bit of a bite to it because it's a jalapeno. And then you've got your other grilling cheeses here, the halloumi cheese. This comes highly recommended here. These pieces right here might look like grilled chicken to you. It's not. It's grilled cheese grilled pieces of cheese and you can put it uh you can do that on the grill like jan has right here because i was going to say when or, you talk about cheese i'm thinking melting but we, you know, when you said grilled cheese right i thought to myself well how do you grill jan you you probably know i mean <laughs> a different type of cheese right this is this one here the um Halloumi cheese we get from cypress that's one of our grilling cheeses and then we have the two grilling cheeses the plain and the ones with jalapeno. And you can put whatever vegetables on your skewer that you want. Um, we just put some peppers, some mushrooms, and some onions. And, and some cheese. And some cheese. You can't forget the cheese. And this is something that you can do year round because lots of folks have this type of a griddle inside. Well, I was going to say we have the exact same thing at, at the house. I'm sitting there looking at it and I'm thinking to myself, because this is hot, folks. I mean, I, I'm not going to touch it because it is, it's, it's grilling right now. now. Now, while Jan is continuing to do that, I do want to tell you about um, we have cheese platters, uh, cheese presentations that you can, you can purchase here at Willie Farms. And some people, even if they don't want to purchase a ready-made one, 
they might want to have an idea, oh, well, they're doing a cheese platter. So they get out a brick of cheese and they just chop it up in cubes and, and, and the, it, they're not really happy with how it looks. So this is a presentation on how you can make your cheese platter look really, really well, nice. And you can put these cheeses on a cracker or a baguette. We have a baguette here and uh, let's see. So people could just do their, come up and do their own and, and mess up my display? Uh, that's right, that's <laughs> so. right. We have some olives, some grapes. You can put, this is a brie. Here's one of the soft cheeses. We've got a baguette and we've got, this is, um, should I tell you that this is goat cheese? I, I, I had a feeling that you were gonna force goat cheese upon me somehow or another. <laughs> so you so. put a little bit of that on there, and then you also, this is some nice chutney, and um, you can put that chutney on there. We sell an awful lot of chutneys. As you can see, we have a mango, there's an apple cranberry, a fig raisin chutney. They're really good, and it really makes a nice addition. So there you go. Give I'm that a try. To eat my first goat cheese Your in my first life goat here. Cheese. I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about the cheese, but this stuff. Here. <laughs> 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 but the cheese is there. Yeah, right. Exactly. It's a nice, complete. It's a nice, complete uh, flavor oh, that that yeah. you get with the combination. Yeah, All right, well, let's, you uh, come let's around take here, a look Doc, at the I grilling. Want to, you know, do some grilling here, because I can't believe this cheese is not melting. And this is, a, this is one of our shish kebabs that we made, so this one's ready to go. And even with having the bonfires in the fall, you don't have to just go with hot dogs and weenies. You can have, you can have the cheese and make your shish kebabs and do it well, over I, a bonfire. I, I have to. You know, I'm going to set this down. I love this. I'll get back this. Don't yeah, touch this, it. That, that, that's tell fine. Jimmy not yes, to touch my... Uh -huh. uh, but uh, I want to try because I'm fried. I, I just can't believe mm -hmm. it. It's going to be a little hot. No, it's mm -hmm. not that bad. It's, uh, now, is that the one with a little bit of jalapeno That's a in it? a little bit of jalapeno oh, in it. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. <laughs> there you go. It has that I crispy outside. Now I know how fried cheese. I mean, this is delicious. I mean, mm -hmm. I, you probably heard of it before, fried cheese, and you thought, well, that's kind of different. Yeah, yeah, that's well, odd. Yeah, but, but, that, that, but there is a special cheese to fry. I mean, it, so don't go, grab a regular thing of cheese and throw it on there because it's not going to do it because it's going to melt. But this right. is designed specifically for frying yes, on the frying. Yeah, so it, it gets warm and then see there's those really nice grill marks that you can get on the cheese and it and it doesn't melt away to nothing. It uh, it gets nice grill marks on it and it gets nice and warm. And uh, and again, you can put that on a baguette, or like we showed you, we can you can put it on a really nice salad. Or you can just eat it. I, I, oh, that, <laughs> that, that is delicious. I was going to say, do you need to move it a couple more pieces out of the I, way? Uh, You've got to try I one. I think Donna, I have to try one because uh, it is delicious. Well, hopefully, you have found a brand new cheese that you want to try out. That's great. Now, why are we here and Dawson piling up the corn? Well, that's because we're going to go to a corn segment that we did. A couple summers ago, we took you out to the farm where the corn grows. Here we go. We're out standing in a cornfield right now, and I want to introduce to you, if you can see him, he's back here behind the corn. This is Tom Tom Godfrey, right? Yeah, Tom, that's yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, and Tom, when it comes to this, because I'm, I'm getting educated on corn today, because you've taught me so much already. But my biggest question is, because this always, Don and I were saying earlier, this comes right off the farm. You guys pack it up, and you take it right straight to Willie's Farms for people. They're buying fresh right off the shelf. That's right. You can't get any fresher than, than the way we're doing it. Yeah, and, and when you're doing it, because you got pickers over here picking away right now, is where because I, I was wondering, because I always thought you plant corn, it grows, you pick it all. Well, how do you keep it all year round like, like you guys do? Well, you don't plant it all at once. That's right. We're planting every four or five days, so it uh, stretches out a little bit at a time all through the summer. Yeah, and then when you're talking about it, I, my biggest curiosity is, okay, I'm out here, and I, which one do I pick? Because you, you kind of have to know, you know, your corn to say, okay, we're picking this row today, guys. Right. Um, well, you know when, you're, when your planting is coming up by, by looking at the, the silks mostly, when they start to turn brown, um, you just need to go out there and pull a few ears now and then and open it up and open it up and uh, 
look at the kernels, see how they're filling out. They come together and they meet. I can tell you, looking at that, that's ready to pick, Tom. <laughs> that's right. And uh, of course, you take a bite out of it, and make sure everything tastes good. Well, well, that's that's what I that's what was amazing to me. And, and you could tell because I, 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 you know, I, I've I've seen you do that. And I, you know, Don, I don't know if you want to get in here and take a bite of this or not, but I'm going to try this. I've never eaten raw corn before, but yeah, they they say that's how you can tell how sweet it is too, right? That's right. Oh, the heck with cooking this stuff. <laughs> ah, why, why we waste our time cooking? I mean, that is really good, you know. Yeah. That, 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 this is what sweet corn now. Is there different types of corn? Yeah, this is what they call super sweet, actually. And it's got a little. Say, it's sugar. sweet. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, the, then there's a, the old silver queen type, the standard sugary types. They're more corny. Uh, and uh, then there's a, a sugar enhanced uh, type, and uh, they're. There's lots of different variations, but it's all more or less sweet corn. Yeah, now you've been farming for your, your entire life, and, and, and you know, th this is, I, I don't know if you've ever taken opened up a stock and taken a bite out of it, but I, I tell you, I can eat corn this way. I, I mean, this is unbelievably, and how sweet it is. Now, how do you know what, what, what do you say, this is super sweet kind of, how do you know that it's going to be that? Well, we know what it's going to be because that's what we planted, but uh, we're growing different types for different customers, and people that want the real extra sweet corn, um, you know, we separate it and keep it for those people. Um, then the, if you want a more traditional corn flavor, uh, a little more corn, a little less sugar, then we grow the older, um, the sugar enhanced type. Yeah. Well, I want to holler, hey, you pickers over here, this is ready to be picked, I'm telling you. <laughs> so as soon as they fit, they're over there picking away over it. How much do you pick on it? Because you, you supply willies, but you're, you know, you're a big farm out here, so you got quite a bit going out. How much do you, 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 do you plant each year? Uh, we plant about 120 acres of fresh market sweet corn, and we probably pick you know, an acre, say 20,000 years a day. Whoa! And then when you're talking about this now, once you you finish with this and picking this, that's it. That stock's done, or is it going to grow more corn? Or no, that's just a one-time pick. You pick it, and then that's it. That's it, and you move on. Because you build a brand new barn that's there for people that's in the area want to stop by and get it fresh off your your farm as well. You have a little produce stand set up in there. What what's the town in this town? Yeah, Southersville, Maryland. Well, and I know farmers, his day's just beginning, so we're going to let Tom get back. Tom, thank you so much for letting us interrupt your day today. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thanks. Well, now that we've come out of the corn, hope you enjoyed that segment from a couple summers ago. Now we're back. We've got Jill. Hi, Jill. Everything Hello. okay How today? Fine, thank you. All right, good. Jill is one of our cashiers, does a great job. But we found out that she is into canning and freezing. Actually, she told me not much to the freezing, no. so I'll talk about that in a little bit. But you can a lot of different things, yes. and we're going to talk about that right now. We're going to talk about canning and freezing, okay. and I see that we have some cherries. We do. All we right. Do. And, we and the first thing to do is to pit them okay. in order to put them in the jars and eat them. After you come into Willie Farms and, and, and we purchase pick them, them up. Yes, always, yes. always. At and Willie the Farms. cherries are really good this exactly. year, too. Exactly, they, they are beautiful. Okay. And so, so you have a gizmo. modeling a little pet cherry pitter. That's oh, the only good thing about this is it pits cherries. Okay. Does nothing else. All right. And you just put that in there. Put that in there. And you push. Squeeze it together. And oh, messy. And there's your It seat. is a little messy, isn't it? it? Is. But that's why it, we use the gloves. Exactly. Okay. And then here we go. So you go through all of the cherries, you all pit all of the cherries. Yes. yes. And um, you have we're gonna put the cherries in a jar. Right. And these we jars are. need to be sterilized yes. and washed Very and everything. Absolutely spotlessly okay. clean. Okay. And then after we do this and we have our water going. Okay. We've not got too hot hard water. Oil, but very hot water. Okay. And now we're just gonna add the sugar. We add sugar. Okay. Do we know how much sugar is in uh, there? There's about three cups. I have three and three. Okay. And we just And let me get our uh Yeah. Our spoon. I'm going to put a little less because I think our water has dissolved a oh. little bit. So we're just going okay. to. Okay. And we want to make this perfectly clear. All right. No cloudy. No, because that would be very sugary, you know, and you would be able to right. feel the you don't sugar want it in your gritty. mouth. You do not want it okay. gritty. Okay. All right. And so now that we're, I'll, I'll stir this. Right. And, and you then just take a jar. You pick up a jar. And I think we have We've a spoon got a right funnel. here. And a funnel. And a funnel. Okay. And we'll just use the funnel for the liquids. So we'll just kind of. Oh, okay. Just put these in here and make sure you really bang them down good to get them nice and oh, okay. tight in there. You get rid of all that extra space. Right, right. All right. 
And that's the way with anything that you would be canning. You would want you don't want any space in right. it for air to because you're trying to get as much of the, exactly. the fruit in there exactly. as you possibly can. And so, do you squash? Do you squish? No, it? no. Nope. I just try to just get them nicely okay. down. Okay, and there we go. And just kind of pat them a little bit and be gentle with them. All right. And then we and just now, ladle. Okay. And we put this on here. All right. And we just ladle. We ladle that in mm -hmm. into and that. And you could pour it in if you like, and that would be fine. You trust me to pour I it do. in? I do. You trust me to pour it in? I All do. Right. And you're just going to go up to an inch below this, the top, and there you go. A little there bit more, go. just a little. Okay, so we'll spoon okay. that a little bit more in. That's it. There you go. That's it. Now, I did uh, I did do some research okay. before we started this. Okay. And I know that um, when you're freezing something, mm -hmm. it depends upon how high you want that liquid to right. be. But right. when you're canning it, which is what we're doing right, right now, uh, you just want to get the the liquid up to about where the ring is? Exactly. They, okay. they say an inch, but, and then this dandy little thing. Okay. You kind of just take it down the side and just make sure that all the little bubbles down the there bubbles come out. are gone. Perfect. And that's that, and that's it. Okay. And then you take a damp rag, and I would wipe it around. So, all right. And then you take a lid. Okay, so let's put this out cap. here so the camera can see it really okay. nice. And, and you take one of these, mm -hmm. one of these mm -hmm. lids, mm -hmm. and you put it right on there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you take a ring, mm -hmm. and you put it on there. Right. And you try and get it on straight. And tight as you can. <laughs> and so you hand tighten right. it. Right. Now, my little okay. trick, and I don't know who does this, but okay. I turn it upside down for a few minutes. No. <laughs> yes, and then I okay. the liquid kind of goes down there, and then you okay. do another one. And then you do another one. And okay. That's, and that's it. It's just it's just that simple. Okay. More in there. All right. Now while you're doing that, mm -hmm. uh, now are we done with this? Right. Yeah. We're done with this. We're going to turn that up right side up. Now, if okay, you were so doing a dozen jars or yeah. six jars, then you would want to give it ideally. It's called a hot bath. A hot bath, and okay. It, and it's a very large pot, and um, you just oh, put them in. Oh, it has the wire. Right, that the you little put the, rack that goes rack. in there for each little, and you just bring that up to a really good boil for about 20 minutes. 20 minutes. And then take them out and just sit them on something okay. pretty, like <laughs> I use pretty um, towels, yeah. and I just put them on my table. And admire them for the next three days <laughs> until I get tired of them. And you and you you sit them there, and then they they do need to seal, and you'll know right. that and they you'll, seal. They'll pop after a while. They pop, and that mm -hmm. means that this little lid goes down. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. And so now we're just going to put the liquid in here okay. again. Okay. Let's talk. Let's talk about after. Mm -hmm. We'll do this in a okay. little bit. Okay. But uh, let's talk about once you have it canned mm -hmm. and you've got it on your shelf in mm -hmm. your pantry somewhere mm -hmm. where you're where you're keeping it. Mm -hmm. And then two or three or four months from now, right. maybe in the middle of the winter, exactly. you go and you get the jar. And everybody is happy. And everybody is happy. happy. And you want to make sure that it has sealed. Right. So when you go to use it, you take the ring right. off and you should not be able to pull that exactly. lid up Yeah, very you have to easily. really take your fingernail or even a can opener sometimes okay. because it'll really seal. Okay. And you make sure that you clean that lip because that's if there's sugar or anything, that's going to hesitate the, the poor little cat it from really It won't seal sealing. properly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, we did this with cherries. Mm -hmm. Can you do this with other fruit? You can, but not like this. If you were doing strawberries, you'd have to cook your strawberries. Okay. And it would be five cups of strawberries to seven cups of sugar okay. to a package of short gel. And mostly we do, when, you, when it comes to fruit, we do freezing, correct? You can. I I'm I don't do freezing too you much. You don't do freezing? No. I do freezing. There you go. I'll show you about freezing. There you go. Freezer jam okay. coming up. Okay. Good. Now we've gotten through the canning of the Bing cherries and we're going to taste them a little bit later. But now we want to talk about some of the other fruits and vegetables that we can do things with during the harvest season. Um, there's there's canning and there's freezing and of course fruits and vegetables sometimes you you treat them differently. Uh, we have a, a couple of really, really good recipes for easy pickles. Stop by, get these wonderful cucumbers. They are great. And uh, get all the ingredients that you need and make yourself some really good easy pickles. So you can stop by and get one of those. Um, we were talking about freezing of the fruits and mm -hmm. the vegetables. Um, you can freeze corn. You can. And you can freeze it right off the cob. Yes. Now there's blanching and there's not blanching. Right. 
And I know that that's a big discussion. Some it people is. like, oh, I never do that. And other people say, you must do that. So I think it's a personal preference. It is a personal preference. All right. And we tomato sauce, when you mm -hmm. put the tomato sauce, you were talking about, this is, um, where's your tomato sauce? Oh, uh, there it is. Right there. there it is. And you did that. Mm -hmm. And those, that's great to get out and do, do sauces oh, and, and things wonderful. like that. Yeah, it really is wonderful. You can freeze the green beans. You can okay. freeze the corn. As far as the fruits are concerned, um, mostly you freeze them too, I think. We did the canning of the, the uh, mm -hmm. cherries, mm -hmm. but now I want to talk about freezer jam. Right. Have you ever made freezer jam? I have not. Well, I have been hearing about this freezer jam and how good it is. Mm -hmm. So I went home last night and I tried it out. It's very, very easy. Once again, we've got the recipe for you here. Just stop by and look for freezer jam. Mm -hmm. This in particular is strawberries. You buy your strawberries. You haul the strawberries, you cut them in not particularly small pieces, mm -hmm. just pieces mm -hmm. like this. Put them in a big bowl. You'll need, according to the, uh, the recipe here, you need about seven cups of mm -hmm. strawberries. But when you get them all hauled and sliced up, you put them in a big bowl. And then potato masher, it's as simple as that. You just that take that simple. and you just mash and mash and mash. Till it gets the consistency and, yeah, that you, you get like. It, it doesn't get real, real thin. It has nice chunks of really good exactly. strawberry in it. So you get so that you know done. you're eating. You get that done. And then in another bowl, you add your sugar and you add freezer jam pectin. Right. Pectin is very important when you're doing uh, canning and such. Absolutely. It's a, uh, it, it helps to uh, gel. Absolutely. Yes. When you're doing homemade. And this is fruit pectin here. You mix this together, mm -hmm. mix that together, and then you put that in with the strawberries. Mm -hmm. You also add some light corn syrup, and it's okay. all in the recipe here. You had some more sugar that you add in there. You get it all all mixed together mm -hmm. and then you let it sit for about a half an hour mm -hmm. and it starts to gel a little bit and then you can actually freeze it in small jars like this right. or you can freeze it in the plastic containers right. which we have right over here and this is what I did last night so it's very fresh this is strawberry freezer jam right here and um, I think we should taste it I think we should I think we should taste it okay so let's taste our freezer jam we're gonna put some of this. This just came right out of the freezer. That's and of course you would take it out of the freezer and then let it but and let it thaw really out a little bit. Being all but yeah, like you can, of course you can put it on a cracker or you can put it on your toast or whatever. So mm -hmm. tell me what you think, mm. Jill. Tastes did like I, fresh strawberries. Did I do good? You did wonderful. Okay, I did good. Mm. 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 I know. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> We're okay. happy with ourselves. I know we are. Mm. And we also need to taste your cherries, we too. Will. We need to taste your cherries. So, mm -hmm. we've got another spoon. There's your spoon. Mm -hmm. I, I know what it tastes like, so you go ahead. Oh, you? Okay. Go ahead. All right. And I hope you love them. Oh, my. I know. That is really good. It's dessert. A pie made out of that? Or over ice cream? Oh yeah. my gosh. It's good over vanilla, but I love it over chocolate ice cream. Oh. Well, you know, I did run into someone last night uh, that I was talking about what I was doing, and mm -hmm. she said, oh, I make that all the time. I love it. She said, my daughter loves it over ice cream. Mm -hmm. So strawberry freezer jam over oh, ice absolutely. cream. Oh, absolutely. Oh, even the strawberry jam over ice cream Oh my wonderful. gosh. And the, and the cherries? Yeah, delicious. Mm. That's wonderful. Mm. Jill, thank you very You're much. You're welcome for giving all this great information about canning and freezing. We really appreciate it. And hopefully, well, it now fun. you've got some ideas and um, stop by, we've got recipes for you. So come on by Woolly Farms and- Anytime, we're always here. Canning and freezing. There you go. Well, I sure hope that you enjoyed revisiting some of those favorite segments that we ran. And uh, wanna remind you, we are easy to find. Woolly Farms, Route 13, just a little bit south of Odessa, and just a little bit north of Smyrna. And if you're traveling on Route 1, very easy. Just get off at either one of those locations, get on Route 13, and here we are. You can't miss us. Well, hope you're having a great summer. It is in the middle of grilling season, and we've got everything you need, including wonderful potatoes that you can put on your grill. They taste great. We've got peppers, and we talked about canning and freezing, so we've got all that here for you, too. 
social media, be sure to follow us on Twitter. We're on Facebook, just facebook.com slash Willie Farms. And don't forget our YouTube channel. That's where you can find all these great segments and you can watch them when you'd like. I'm Donna Cavender. Thanks for watching from Willie Farms. Have a great day.